Good afternoon. I'm Neeru Somayajal. I'm the CEO of Sensor Technology, a company headquartered right here in Collingwood, Ontario. And I'm passionate about the ocean, but more importantly, about the technology that's used to know our oceans better. So this is where we live, and as you can see, all of that blue stuff is something called H2O. In fact, 70% of the Earth's surface is covered in water. Yet somehow, we don't know anything about it. So why is it that we know more about Mars, an extraterrestrial planet, than we do about our own oceans? There's a couple of reasons. Mars. So, pressure, the atmospheric pressure that you experience in Mars is about one atmosphere or 14 PSI. I know that I put anywhere from 70 to 120 PSI into the tires of my bike. When you're working underwater, you can experience pressure as high as 10,000 PSI. It's huge. So if you want to imagine, put your hand up, and you put 14 jumbo jets head to tail on top of your hand. That's what 10,000 PSI can feel like. You're also working with corrosive materials. It's electrically conductive underwater, and you can experience wild temperature swings from the surface to underwater. And the technology and the equipment that has to work underwater has to survive all of that. And so 70% of the Earth is covered in water, yet we've only explored less than 15%. We know so little about what's happening in those murky waters. In Canada, we have the longest coastline in the world, 7,500 kilometers of coastline, yet we know very, very little about it. So let me back up a little bit. What does a company based here in Collingwood care about what's happening in the ocean, which is thousands of kilometers away? Well, 36 years ago, we started as part of a pottery company called Blue Mountain Pottery, making ducks and cups and that iconic teal blue. Well, they wanted to diversify, and diversify they did. We make high-tech ceramics. So what do high-tech ceramics have in the ocean? Well, high-tech ceramics are actually called piezoelectric ceramics, and they were discovered 140 years ago, and they have this really unique property where if you push on them, there's an electric voltage that comes out. Or conversely, if you put an electric voltage in, they will actually vibrate. And they're really great for communicating underwater. That said, you will find piezoelectric crystals in your everyday life, in your barbecue lighter, in those kids' shoes that light up when they're jumping on them. Those always use piezoelectric ceramics. You will also maybe come across them in the world of imaging. So if you've ever had a medical ultrasound done, there's a piezoceramic in there as well. And so, heaps of applications use piezoceramics, but we're lucky enough to be involved in the underwater market. And applications like this, where a commercial fisherman will take sensors that use piezos and actually know where their nets are wide enough. They'll be able to tell where there's pods of fish, and they can even tell if their nets are full. These sensors give them information in order to be able to make decisions. Information is key. A company based in Halifax, Nova Scotia, called Vemco, they use our piezoelectric ceramics to make acoustic fish tags. They'll take a ceramic, and they'll actually implant it into a juvenile salmon while it's alive, and they'll use that tag to be able to track its migration patterns, whether it's in a lake or a river system or even in the ocean. And again, they're trying to find information. What's happening to these species? What's the water temperature like? How's the salinity of the water? Where are they going? Why are they going there? This is HAL. Now, HAL was tagged in 2018 as part of a O-Search research vessel. Hal and a number of his buddies were all tagged, and you can actually follow them on Twitter. You can see where they are, 
know what they're doing, I'm pretty sure the East Coast surfers are pretty happy to have that Twitter feed. <laughs> a big part of why they were tagged is that we want to know more about what they're doing. What is their environment? Where are they traveling? The information that we get from these type of te technical devices, and piezo ceramics, can help us make informed decisions on how to better protect ourselves and the marine life. Now, my company, we're not involved in the big systems that go into deep exploration, but we do manufacture the acoustic sensors that go on all of those types of vehicles. And thanks to having clients around the world that are trying to go deeper and longer and have better image resolution, I've got a front row seat into what's happening in the world of ocean tech. So what is happening in the world of ocean tech? So we know that there's less than 15% of explored ocean. A lot more to know. And so the big push in the world right now of ocean tech is to gather big data. We want to know more. And as we all know, a picture, it's worth a thousand words. And so the technology that's emerging today is helping us gather information by way of seeing pictures. Great images help us know more, help us learn more. And so, a couple of really interesting things that is the future of ocean tech. This is an autonomous underwater vehicle. It's created by a company here in Canada called Kraken Robotics, and this is their Thunderfish. What's amazing about this vehicle is that it's completely unmanned. It's intended to be used without humans. It's given a mission, it's deployed off the back of a ship, and thanks to its sensors, the sensors will tell it where to go, how to get there, how to avoid marine life, how to avoid other vehicles along the way, and it also takes lots of lots of images along the way. And what's most incredible is that it can work as deep as 6,000 meters below sea level. That's six kilometers. It's incredible. And the types of images that Kraken's able to produce with their thunderfish look something like this. You can see lots of detail here, but what's more interesting, I think, is that there's information. And this information can inform decisions. This is a ship, but this could have been a plane. Is this the plane that went missing? Is this maybe the plane that we should be mobilizing to bring up to understand what happened, to know more? Information is king. And all of these vehicles help us to understand a little bit more about what's happening under the ocean. Now, what I find even more interesting is that we're going the way of electric vehicles underwater. This is an underwater docking station. So instead of vehicles having to come back up to the surface, get loaded back onto a ship, data to be removed, batteries to be recharged, instead you've got an underwater garage. Nicest looking garage I've ever seen. Vehicle can float on in, recharge, dump data that's tethered to the surface, can get its new mission, and off it goes again, without ever having to come to the surface, and without ever having to interact with a human. There's also these things called unmanned surface vehicles. And these are intended to work along the surface of the water. This is made by a company called Ixblu in France, and it actually comes with customizable payloads that drag behind it, depending on the mission that it's going on. In this case, it can operate for seven days on one charge, and it's out to survey the offshore wind farms wanting to know whether the structural integrity of those structures are good. All of this can happen, yet again, without humans. Now, this is one that I'm probably the most excited about. This is the world's first autonomous electric container vessel, and it was developed by a group called the Yara Birkland in conjunction with a Norwegian company called Kongsberg. And it's the first one of its kind completely unmanned, that will replace 40,000 truck trips a year in an otherwise densely urban area. It has sensors built all around it that will let it know when there's other vehicles in the area. It'll let it know if there are marine life in the area. 
and in very congested shipping corridors where there's lots of marine life, this is a growing concern. And so this will actually do its first voyage in 2020, and it will revolutionary change the way shipping is done these days. Understanding the sea is important. The more information that we're able to gather, the better decisions that we'll be able to make. We can not only protect ourselves, but we can protect the marine life. As well, being able to find new underwater resources will help us find new food sources, possible new ecosystems that will find medicines, as well as energy sources. Knowing more about what's happening underwater will protect us from tsunamis. They will also help us be able to predict tectonic shifts in the Earth to know more about earthquakes. I think what's most important, though, in the gathering of big data in the ocean is that we'll be able to better manage our ocean resource. And that's going to help it be sustainable for generations to come. I'm honored to be part of the ocean tech world, and I'm pretty excited about what the future has to offer. Thank you.